Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 43. As always, I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams, and joining me as always, my co-host, who's deep in his phone right now. That's how I do it, son. Junior Ruiz. Ruiz, co-host of... Comics uh, Remix. Breaking the Fourth Wall. Oh, I'm sorry. Breaking the Fourth Wall I at Comics Remix. I was like... Dot com. Like, As always. Who am I? <laughs> this week, we're talking about Forever Evil. Did you read all Forever Evil? Mm-hmm. Everything? All seven. I didn't read all the tie-ins. So you didn't read Blight? No, I read the actual seven-issue... Uh, for every evil series, mm-hmm. and I read Justice League tie-in, mm-hmm. not Justice League Dark or Justice League of America, just Justice League. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you didn't do the Rogues Rebellion, or you know what? I didn't finish that. Or Arkham I started. War. Arkham War. I think I read the first issue to all to Arkham War and Rogues Rebellion. There was another one, wasn't there? Argus. Yeah. I started those. Um, I got the farthest with Rogue's Rebellion, but I didn't finish it. I didn't read the Batman vs. Bane one-shot either. Ah. Should I have? No. Okay. It was alright. It was a one-shot. I mean, it was... Yeah. It is what it is. It was... Yeah, you know? It wasn't a bad event, man. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, Because, like, Trinity War I thought was good. Uh, I didn't know it was going to lead up to this. I thought this was an interesting take on the crime syndicate. Okay. As, you know, instead of... I mean, they've been from, what, Earth 3, and then they've been from the antimatter universe or whatever. It's, uh, it was a good take that we've talked about before, the kryptonite snorting Superman. Yeah. That's insane. That's interesting. Especially for a little, if, if a kid is reading Forever Eagle. And then, you know, the hooded man. Who's the hooded man? I mean, the, the setup for anything was really good. Um, Were you disappointed when they revealed that it was uh, Alex Luther? No, nah, I knew that's who it was going to be. Did you really? Yeah. I mean, because for me, who was the key piece missing from that puzzle? Yeah. Alexander Luther. Yeah. Because every time, I mean, every story that I've read with the Crime Syndicate, he's been a, an integral piece somewhere. Yeah. I mean, there, but he's always been mentioned and there was no mention of it. It's like, well, that's kind of who it is. Were For a while, surprised? I thought it might be their Dick Grayson. Were you surprised, though, that, uh, that he had the powers that he with had? The Shazam thing? Yeah. yeah. How do you say that? Like, Ma- Mazahash? Something like that. Whatever. So you were surprised by that. So was I. Now, here's a bigger surprise. Yeah, I couldn't say that backwards. I was just trying to think about it. Lois Lane, a.k.a. Superwoman, the fucking whore. Right? Dude, she's sleeping with Night Owl, or Night Owl, that's fucking Watchmen. She's sleeping with the owl, and um, she's telling him, you know, oh, yeah, this is our baby, but I'm lying to Ultraman or whatever, and Ultraman thinks that's his kid. It turns out it's fucking Luther's kid. I'm like, damn, lady. And then the fact that none of them really got done away with either at the end, you know what I mean? Like, uh, whether they got Ultramans in a prison. Yeah. I don't know where Superwoman is. Superwoman. What did they do? No, they did kill her, didn't they? Did they? I believe so. They killed everybody except Ultraman, who's in the prison, and Owl got away. Like, nobody knows where Owl is. But he's going to be showing up in Batman for sure. But other than that, no, they all got away. Uh, Everybody else died. I remember Johnny Quick died. Johnny Quick totally died. Dude, Luther killed Atomica. That was totally. He just fucking stepped on it. Yeah, totally. You know, that was was a very... Power Ring is dead, and now there's a new one. Yeah. Uh, The chick. Uh, Deathstorm died. Yeah, they they killed off Superwoman as well, I believe. What about the unborn child? Well, if they killed the mom... I don't think they killed her, though. I don't remember. Because I really feel like that would be a fucking horrible plot point. To have just snuffed out. See, this is terrible. We're, we're like, talking about it, and I don't even remember what happened. It's because it's been so long ago. Yeah. And they slow-rolled it horribly. Yeah. That it's, The time between the issues was terrible. I agree. But, I mean, it wasn't a bad series. Um, the tie-ins fucking were terrible. Yeah. Uh, Arkham War, mediocre. The Rogues. Man, I love the Rogues, dude. And the Rogues have been one of the best things about the New 52, because they don't feel like they really changed them too much. Okay. They stuck with what was good about them, like, you know, they were able to do some things they couldn't have done pre-New 52, mm-hmm. like Golden Glider being back, you know, Snart's sister, Lisa Snart. I don't know how much you know about Flash Rogues. Those were good, but I'm a huge fan of the Rogues, so maybe right. that was just me. Batman, Bane, the Yeah. Argus, the Blight, piece of shit. Which one was Blight? Did that run in um, Justice that League That was Dark? Justice League Dark, Constantine, Phantom, Stranger... And Pandora. How's Phantom Stranger been? I haven't read it's it. It's all a while. fucking crap. Is it? 
all of it. I think the last issue I read for Phantom Stranger, like, still in the single. I'm going to tell you right now. I liked Pandora. I liked Phantom Stranger. I liked Constantine. I liked Justice League Dark, and then Blight happened. I'm I'm not fucking kidding at all. And Blight destroyed my interest in every fucking single one of those titles, except for Justice League Dark, well, because now Zatanna is leading Justice League Dark after the fall from Forever Evil. What happened to Constantine? He's gone. Like, gone by. He's out because he's a douchey bastard. And, oh, they you know, just now realize that? He showed his true colors. and So he's back to being, like, just pre-New 52 Constantine. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, untrustworthy douchey bag. They'll hype him up again really yeah. soon because of the damn show. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, he, I mean, he's still got his book, but... Yeah. Well, actually, his book hasn't been terrible since Blight ended. Just the whole Blight thing was awful. Well, what was Blight? Explain this to me and to our listeners who have not read it. Blight all had to do with events really falling out of Phantom Stranger. Okay. Well, see, like uh, I said, I haven't read that book in a while. So if you weren't reading... Like, I don't even want to sit here and explain it because it would hurt my brain and my face because it's coming out of my mouth with just pain. And it's just horrible crap. (laughs) It was just... uh, (laughs) It wasn't good, man. No, it really had to do with, like, this guy whose life the Phantom Stranger took over. Because when Phantom Stranger first started, as you know because you were reading it, he had like a family and and they were kids. Right, right. But he wasn't really this Philip Stark guy. Okay. He, Philip Stark, was someone he knew and and befriended, and then he found out that Philip Stark was going to murder his family. Mm. And then he killed Philip Stark and took his place. And then Philip Stark... Ask Philip Stark, though. Physically. Uh, no, I so think the he... the wife no, thinks I, he's still Philip Stark. No, I, I, I don't think that... I don't remember now. Or did he just be like, hey, your husband's dead, I'm your new... Uh... I, it was one or the other. Whatever. It's really unimportant in the long run of things. Okay, okay. I don't know if he... He might have taken over the guy's identity, but I could be wrong, because it's been a while, and I read a lot, and Phantom Strange is really not that good. Whatever. It sucks, because <laughs> I, was, I was into it. No, I mean, at first it was really good. But this guy comes back and he's kind of like the the opposite the of what yeah okay. the, he I can't remember what they call him the sin eater the guy who killed uh, fucking uh, Gene DeWolf Gene DeWolf Spider Man remember Captain Gene DeWolf oh yeah obviously not because this is DC you dick <laughs> sin eater he had no. a green mask and a mm-hmm. shotgun what else do you I mean? totally know what you're talking about but no it's a, it's more of like a biblical sin eater you know the eater of souls. Kind of thing. Yeah. Which they play off as villainous. So it had really a lot to do with heaven and hell. And like this uh, blight is one of the, I guess, is a deadly sin. And it possessed this kid. and It was just a horrible, terrible story that dragged on way too long. And Nightmare Nurse is just too weird of a fucking character. And it's just like, every time I look at Pandora, she reminds me of that like crazy chick with the right on her face from... Young blood or whatever from Image from Zealot. 20 years ago. Zealot, there you go. And I, it Dude, just, they fell off so hard with Pandora. Then they hype her up. She was like, totally yeah, issue. Like, you Pandora's going to... That's the problem with the new 52 is I feel like... I feel like they need to go back to post. But obviously that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Forever Evil. Well, there's rumors, man. There's rumors. Uh, I could see it happening because there's a lot of good stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that's just like, uh... Like, I feel like Superman was starting to get better, and then they did that World of Krypton shit, and it kind of fucking uh, took them some steps back. We're still speaking New 52. We're, I'm talking pre-52 now. Oh, okay. And then they were launched 52, and he's been a hot mess. In my opinion, Superman's been a hot mess for a long time. Way before all that shit. It's funny because every new uh, writer who comes on the book is always like, well, you know, Superman... In the in the last few years, has fallen out of popularity. Our goal is to make him, you know, the prime shining example of what DC is. We're going to put him back to prominence, and they never do. And the it's, next writer comes in and says the exact same thing. It's a whole lot of talk and absolutely no delivery. Dude, the last time I seriously, really fucking enjoyed Superman, there was two story arcs. One, death of Superman, death return, and all that crap. World without Superman, that was really good. Regardless of how you feel about it, that was just a great story. The second time I was really like, damn, Superman books are pretty awesome again, was in early 2000s when Brian Azzarello was writing it and Jim Lee was on the artwork. Remember Man that? for Tomorrow? Yeah. That was some good Superman stuff. I have been reading Superman in the New 52, really just action comics. I did the f- original Superman book for about like 15 issues. 
and I just couldn't read it anymore. I am reading Doomed, though. I read all the super titles up to uh, the prelude to um, the crossover, like in the teen, what, issue 15 or whatever, uh, Hell on Earth. Okay. I started reading up to there. I didn't read Hell on Earth. I didn't read it either. I, I read up to it, and then I realized I was missing an issue, so I stopped. I'm gonna go back and when I start again, I'll start right, from right, that right. At, from that point on. But um, I was digging Supergirl, Superman. It was it was better to me than Action Comics was. I am not. I'm sorry. I am not a Grant Morrison fan. Yeah, no. You know, everybody's like, like man. everybody's like, oh, his artwork or his that uh, Mixel Pitlick yeah. stuff was just like what? It's hard to understand Grant Morrison's writing because he goes. Like, let me drop a tab, like, about five hits of acid. Yeah, and, and he's the only maybe, one who understands it. Maybe I'll comprehend this. You know? I kind of doubt it. <laughs> but I'll try. He's yeah, the only one who fucking gets it, and he's more like, you know, his his stories are so sporadic. Well, I have to tell you right now that if you haven't read Doomed, the new current Superman storyline right, that's right, bringing right. Doomsday back, I've read the uh, Doomed, the one-shot, mm-hmm. and then... Uh, infected, I think it's called Infected. Yeah. Parts up to three. Okay. And it's been like, this is the best Superman story of the New 52. Wow. Bottom line. If the, if Superman can't gain any popularity and momentum right now, that's never going to happen. See, my problem, it's not just Superman. Well, I, I guess we can use him as an example at the moment. You know, in this day and age, you get the, uh, and I understand why, you know, the advanced solicitations with previews and everything like that, mm-hmm. it sucks. Because it takes away the surprise aspect of it. Like with Superman doomed and affected, you know, what's, what's happening? He's turning into like a doomsday or something. Yeah. So you're like, oh my God, how's he going to get out? Is he going to get out of this? What are they going to do? Blah, blah, blah. But then you know next month, Romita is coming. And, and who's taking over the writing duties on there? Jeff Johns? Jeff Johns, yeah. Okay, so Jeff Johns with issue 32 and John Romita Jr. So you know he's going to get out of it and they're starting, yeah, you know yeah. like, so what's the point? You know, I hate that shit. Like, well, I that's hate why that solicitations comments. ruined fucking Forever Evil. The seventh issue wasn't even out, and they told you Lex Luthor's going to be on the Justice League. Yeah, Dick Grayson's not gonna, not dead. He's going to be a fucking. He's going to be fucking Wonder Woman from the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck your Winter Soldier comparisons. Last week, everyone's on like Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier, motherfucker. This was done way before Winter Soldier. It was called Diana Prince. Yeah. Okay. With her white fucking go-go boots and her yep. fucking 60s suit. It's been done before. It's terrible. It's, this is this is the one thing I hate about Forever Evil. This is what they've done with fucking Grayson. Disturbing continuity. They just fucking suck. Destroy continuity, actually. But otherwise, it was an art story, you know? Okay. Um, I like how we're supposed to be know. talking about Forever Evil and we spiraled into everything else. Well, it's DC, so it's hard just to... Because you, talk, well, you start talking about all these other books that were connected with Forever Evil. Yeah. And then you just get into the cesspool of suck that is the majority of comics today. It's a big cesspool. Yeah, the majority of mainstream comics. I'm not just going to lay blame completely on DC. I'm going to slap it on Marvel's ass, too. Oh, yeah. Because, bitch, you ain't perfect. Not at all. No, I agree. That bitch got some problems. Her mascara's fucked up. Some of her teeth are crooked. I stopped reading anything <laughs> Avengers. Because I got it got to be way too much. You know, I was just mm-hmm. overwhelmed with Avengers. I just stopped reading. And, then, like, I couldn't understand Jonathan Hickman's fucking writing anyway. It's another Grant Morrison. Especially after that fucking crap shit that was in Infinity. Infinity. Yeah, he's the Grant Morrison of Marvel. I was like, I spent the whole day reading that shit. Every tie and everything. I, so I was like, man, I'm going to get the full fucking story out of this. It sucked so bad. Yeah, that's funny. I read Infinity and this this buddy of mine from Facebook, he's like, Oh, dude, did you read all the tie-ins and stuff? It makes so- I'm like, fuck that noise, dude. It's, it's like, have you been reading the Avengers? I'm like, no. It was stupid. Infinity was just it was so just crappy. just stupid. You know, you're like, when the solicits for Infinity when they first came out, oh shit, Infinity. Thanos is coming. Dude, the Avengers did not fight Thanos once in that fucking series. Yeah, the point no, was to no, set up man. the Inhuman stuff. It was Thanos yeah, yeah, totally. wanted to come that find was... his son. The that Inhumans got destroyed. Like they're, they're, you that's know, like, oh, we're going to make the Inhumans the new X-Men so we can make That's exactly what it was. But we need something for the Avengers to do, so we'll send them into space and create Avengers World. They don't need to call it Avengers World. They could just call it Avengers Comics. So lame. But back to DC and Forever Evil. Not a bad event. 
That's it. From now on, I'm calling them destroying continuity. Destroying continuity? Yeah. See, here's the thing. I've heard rumors that now they're supposed to uh, end with this whole multiver- multiversity shit. And multiversity, other, yeah. All these other things they got coming up. Another Grant about, Morrison book? You know, all these... Mo- yeah. yeah. All the um, multiple worlds. Are they yeah. going to merge back into the original DCU? And Okay, so you do that. So what happens to the New 52 stuff? You know, obviously does it go away? Does some of the stuff count? Well, obviously... Does it overlap? Like, obviously the stuff that works is going to get folded in. Aquaman shit folded in. Wonder Woman, the Greek God shit folded in. Yeah. Green Lantern never changed. Batman, back to old status quo. So everything works with the night, the, the Robins. You know, Tim Drake gets to be a Robin again. Or gets to be Red Robin again. The way it was meant to be, not the weird incarnation that we have now. I'm not, you know, I was excited I don't have a about problem the with that. man. I don't have a problem with the whole Tim Drake thing. Well, he's just not, they don't ever fucking use him now. Yeah. But I, I mean, I get it. It was just, he was, when it was him, time for him to become Robin... He chose no. I want to be my own identity, and he was. It was still Batman and Robin. But it was Batman and Red Robin. Yeah. They just added red to the front of it. What's the big fucking deal? Fanboys, man, you guys are so fickle. Whatever, man. Don't act like you're okay with that shit. I was all right with it. Come on now. With the, Don't the, lie. The, the red, uh, red Robin thing. Teen Titans sucked. Yeah. Teen Titans sucked. I'm sorry, sorry, Scott Lobdell. I stopped loving you after you left Generation X. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of... Man, I don't know what it is. But the, the Future's End now, their new thing. See, I haven't read which that. Which, for some reason, I thought Future's End was going to be the September thing. Like, I thought all the books of September were going to jump five years into the future. They are. But that's what Future's End is. Future's End is... Right, that's what that is. The books of September are one-shots focusing on the specific characters. So, like, they're going to have Wonder Woman, Future's End, number one. Okay, but isn't that in fucking September? Yes. And I'm not mistaken, this is... We're in June. Okay, June. Okay. What's your point? We still got July, August. You got three months to go. Okay. But they've been releasing Future Send almost. It's a weekly series. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to continue. It's like not. It's going to roll all the way to September. Dude, yeah, dude. Remember their weekly DC is known for their weekly series being a year long. Remember but I thought Batman Eternal continues. was like I didn't know they were that Future Send was going to be. Here's like, the thing with Batman Eternal. Future's End, and there's a third one that they're doing. I can't remember the fucking name of it, but there's three weeklies that they're doing. In the month of March for next year, all three titles will stop for the big event that they have coming in March. They Dan DiDio has not said if those three titles are going to be stopped, period, or if they're going to go on a hiatus. Because he said he never said, or DC has never announced that these weeklies are all going to be 52 issues. Right. They didn't say how long they were going to go. We do know that they're going to go until March. So, I mean, you would just have to look at a calendar and add up the weeks from now till March. You know? But whether they continue after that event, nobody knows. What I think is funny is, did you hear about Marvel's event for next year? The Avengers Time Runs Out or whatever? No. Yeah. Uh, Hold on your Marvel talk. Let's wrap this up. Future's End. Five years in the future. Batman Beyond's five years from the future. Like, he's come from the past, landed five years of the future. Does that seem familiar? But he's supposed to come now. <sighs> Spider-Man 2099. Yeah. No, yeah, I could see that. I don't think he's going to get stuck here, though. But it's kind of weird, because everyone's in a different position. Like, Firestorm's a dick. He doesn't want to be Firestorm anymore. It's, it's really a weird, strange well, he's fucking never, book. Like, I read Firestorm, and it was part of, before I got canceled. Yeah. He never wanted to be Firestorm. Well, but he they... one of those guys. Well, one of them. Well, it's, at some point, they had both agreed that, like, you know, they had to... They had to do it. But it's, So it's five years later, and Ronnie Raymond doesn't want anything to do with that shit. Yeah. And they're getting a call from Green Arrow, who I guess is running the Justice League now or some shit, I guess. I'm not really sure. They haven't really explained too much. But they don't show up, and then when they finally do show up, they get there, and everything's already fucked up, and Green Arrow's dead. And everybody, like, blames Firestorm for Green Arrow dying and him not being there when fucking Green Arrow called and shit. Well, all right then. And then at the same time, everyone's shitting on Firestorm for it. Jason's shitting on Ronnie, and then fucking Ronnie's like, "Well, fuck you, motherfucker! I'm not letting you out. You want to be Firestorm? All right, we're Firestorm all the time now, bitch. Wow. What are you gonna do about it?" So he's become like this aggressive, cocky asshole. And then there's a lot of Grifter, mm. and a little bit of Frankenstein. And then well, like, Grifter hasn't been seen since the solo book since they canceled his title. Yeah, I, I thought this was supposed to have something to do with Brother Eye. 
I don't know what the f- I don't even think DC has an idea of what they're doing because they start all these plots and they don't feel like with Grifter he was there to hunt the demon knights that's still what he's doing in this okay because then you remember how they were like oh um people would be like oh the demon knights and then they would spell it demon knights like yeah. a comic and then we find out later that demon knights is the early incarnation of Stormwatch right which when Jim Starlin took over, I think it was issue nineteen or some shit like that. I stopped reading because it was horrible. Oh, like, they killed Stormwatch. Stormwatch is dead. Yeah, I heard that. But it's like okay, but when Jim Starlin took over, what I the, the new fifty two Stormwatch just disappeared. Yeah. Then the authority came in. Right, right. Like wait, what? I don't. I didn't understand it. Whatever. It's the it's the house of bad ideas, man. The house of bad ideas. <clears throat> now my whole issue with this and the solicitations before we go, I just gotta get this out. In the solicitations for this fucking series, they said that Brother I, this is his introduction to the, the DC New. Okay. That is bullshit. Brother I was in OMAC. Oh. Dan DiDio fucking wrote OMAC. Is Dan DiDio so stupid that he doesn't remember putting Brother I in his own book? Apparently. What Apparently. the fuck? But it looks like this doesn't look. This doesn't look good. It just doesn't. And and I feel like since we've this issue was. Uh, Forever Evil, Future's End, Forever Crap, and a bunch of up. crap in DC. Because well, they're fucking pretty bad, man. We read the garbage so you don't have to. Yeah, terribly. It's it's terrible. Terribly. It's ter- <laughs> it was, I, I, I feel fucking for people that go and buy everything. Because you're wasting your money. Green Lantern shit right now. The Green Lantern books are crap, man. I heard that. I heard that. Green Lantern New Guardians is like, ugh. Red Lanterns, actually. I'm going to take that back. Red Lanterns is the book. Okay. Out of that section of the universe, if you're going to read a Green Lantern title, Red Lanterns is the book to read. Okay. And the addition of Supergirl and Guy Gardner being the leader now has helped. But I don't know how long it's going to last because Atrocitus is back. Okay. I haven't read the new issue, so that's going to be exciting. But otherwise, Green Lantern's a hot mess. Batman's a hot mess. Detective Comics. You know, they've now got Manipal over there and that other guy that was doing Flash. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of maybe thinking they might they might do good on Batman because Flash was awesome with them. Now Flash is kind of going through some bumps. You know one thing I hate? I think every character should have one title. If you want to appear like in a team book, like, for example, Wonder Woman and Flash, they have one book each, and they both appear in Justice League. That's fine. I don't need two Superman titles. Three if you count Unchained, it's on a hiatus. I don't need four or five Batman titles. Because now you're like, okay... Obviously, zero year Batman in zero years. It's a past tale, so you don't count that. But then you have Detective Comics. No, you don't need multiple Batman books. You don't because but, which one's in continuity? Well, you got Detective, you got fucking Batman and Robin, and what's the other one? There's a fourth one, Dark Knight. Yeah, like okay. isn't that getting canceled though? Isn't Dark Knight going away? I think so. I haven't seen that issue. Well, there's a lot of Batman. I don't have a problem with a character having two books, depending on the nature of that character. A character like Flash. Doesn't really need to have a second book. No, he does not. A character like Aquaman, he has a second book. Good for Aquaman. It's, it's not bad. I've read a couple issues. Yeah. It's okay. He doesn't really need a second book. No, he doesn't. Superman? You could give Superman a second book. Because you could do shit. There could be a book about Superman and shit on Earth and Superman and shit out in the universe. See, well, here's my thing. Because there's it's, not the enough... Online. We got the Superman online comic, uh, Adventures of Superman. That's not in continuity. Right. But why can't something like that, why can't action comics be something like that? Yeah. It's not in continuity, it's just Superman Tales, and then you have Superman, the actual in continuity book. Well, and my final thing I'm going to say for this Forever Evil bash on DC Fest... It sucked. ...was that I feel action comics should go back to 80s, late 80s style action comics, where it was like a team-up book. Superman and fucking somebody else. So Superman, like Batman, the Batman the Superman, blah, 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 Superman, yeah. I loved action comics in the eighties when I was a kid. Those were my. I want to go back and and find out where they started doing that. That was the action and comics. And just buy the whole fucking run. Isn't that when they did action comics weekly? Uh, it might be. It I might be because I got a bunch of that shit. Hawkman, the Metal Man, Captain Adam. You know, it was it was yeah. a great book. That's the way they need to do it. And there needs to be more one and dones. Tell a story in one issue and get it over. I really appreciate that shit because yeah. it can be done. They don't need to do this decompressed storytelling where they take all fucking long ass to tell a story. Robert Kirkman. Just you really want to get into Robert Kirkman and his backwards ass? I'm gonna screw the fans over kind of shit. Yeah, really quick what, on the. Uh, uh, we have a quick moment. Did on you a side interview? note, I, I can give you an interview. Did you read the interview that he did? Yeah, no. it was back in April. I forgot who he did it. Moviepilot.com. 
Okay. Where they talked to Kirkman about the success of the Walking Dead TV show uh-huh. and Daryl Dixon. He says Daryl Dixon was a character created for the show. You know, the popularity has been a crazy, but we want to keep him on the show. The book is its own separate entity. Lo and behold, the solicitations for August's book, or excuse me, July's book, Walking Dead number 129. Who's on the fucking cover? Daryl Dixon. Fucking Dixon. Really? Wow. That's somebody at the store or pre order 50 copies. But they're like, oh, it's not Daryl. Because the character has his back to the to the reader. But he's got the vest with the wings on the back and he's got the crossbow and he's got the long shaggy hair. So they're like, oh, it's not Daryl. Like, dude, well, who the fuck is it? You can't introduce a character exactly like Daryl and not call him Daryl. Fans are going to be pissed. Yeah, I know, totally. I bet that's what it is. It's going to be a big tease. But that's my like thing. Like, okay, stuff. you just told people that it's separate. You're not going to introduce them. You're going to keep the integrity of the book. Well, I had, I had read because AMC owns the rights to that character. Yeah. That... It wouldn't be worth them to have to pay AMC for the rights to use that character in the comic book. Which I believe that. No, that I believe. That yeah. just trying to fuck with people. But yeah, but I'm just saying, like, why would you just come out and say that and just say we're never going to put him in the comics and then bang off? But anyway, solicitation. That's Forever Evil. Forever Evil wasn't bad. Future's End, I have no idea. DC Comics, my opinion, for the majority, hot mess. Maybe a handful of titles out there that are really good. They're destroying it's really, continuity. It's really, they're destroying their company with their bad comics. They are. It's, it's terrible. And David Goyer. Read Batman Eternal, Wonder Woman, Flash is okay sometimes. Uh, if you don't mind that Wally West is coming black, coming back black. <laughs> <laughs> Read Wally, Flash. Cause Wally West side. Wally West side. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't bother me. Whatever. I don't care. I was never a big Wally West fan anyway. I mean, I was, but I was 10 years old, so it's, there's a difference. Yeah. But uh, anyway, this that's the Spinner Rack. I am... Uh, Big B, Brian Adams, co-host, Junior Ruiz, comicsremix.com. Uh, email us at comicsremix.com or at Gmail, right? Yeah. So. Or hit us up on Facebook. Or Facebook. That's the easiest way. Go on our comic book. Uh, <laughs> We're Facebook or <laughs> yeah, Go to Comics Remix on Facebook and just be like, you guys fucking suck. You sound dumb and talk stupid shit. But I listen anyway. Yeah. And then we'll just be like, hey, thanks. Go fuck yourself. Here's a free thanks comic. For yeah. And no, we're not giving away free comics. I can. I mean, he might want to give away a free comic. I got tons of free comics at home. I got extras. Like, well, there you go. Leave. We're going to have to start doing Give giveaways. giveaways. <laughs> oh, we have time real quick or no? Can I can I mention something? Yeah, if you, you can be time? quick with it, yeah. Comic Stream Mix is holding a, a trivia contest for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. I'm going to try to get the entire Comic Stream Mix crew to go watch it that Friday night along with 10 lucky fans. You're going to get free seats, popcorn, all that shit. That's on you. Transportation is on you, but the movie ticket for the premiere that night is on us. Not the premiere, but you know the premiere night, I should say. Uh, it's gonna be on us. I should say on me. So. Um, oh, so you want to go the night? Friday night, not Thursday night, not you know the preview night. I mean the actual Friday release. Right. You know, because a lot of people don't have to get up Saturdays. So I'll, I'll wait. It's gonna be horrible. It's gonna be hard. But I'll wait till that Friday night to go watch it. So. um more details coming really soon about how you can enter this uh, contest. Uh, I'm afraid it is only, obviously only open to locals. Obviously, you can't get it if you're living in like Ohio or something. Yeah, hey, fuck it. If you live in Ohio and you want to play this contest, then you got to win. If you can get your ass to fucking Chicago, we'll take well, here's you to the, the movie. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fu- yeah. But the contest itself is gonna be a trivia contest. It's gonna be in person because anybody can Google fucking answers. Uh, totally. So it has to be in person. Um, the days are going to be announced really soon where I'll be doing this trivia contest as well as uh, there's going to be three levels of questions or three rounds. Round one will be the most gener- you know, the general questions that almost anybody can answer. Right. And they get harder as they go. So do your turtle trivia. Yeah, hey, free movie. You know. Ninja Turtles. Come watch it with the crew. Uh, we hope to be filming at the premiere as well or that night, you know, uh, talking to fans, seeing what they thought about the movie, their hopes going in, how they feel after the movie, you know. So it should be a lot of fun. There you go. Keep listening for more details on Spinner Rack, also on Breaking the Fourth Wall, and of course on Facebook and Twitter. Comicsforbiz.com. See you next week. Peace.